Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, I'm John Howard. I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, it's worked on Istio for about five years now. And I'm going to be talking about tracing CI CD with OpenTelemetry. And if you don't understand what any of those words mean, hopefully I will cover those in the next 10 minutes. I only have 10 minutes, so things are going to be pretty quick, but we're going to cover why observability into a CI CD pipeline is important, how tracing can help there, and then the actual concrete steps that you need to take to go achieve them in your infrastructure. Uh, you may notice that actually, yeah, I haven't said Istio yet, and this is IstioCon. The reason this is related to IstioCon is for two, two reasons. One is that Istio has actually done these in our own CSCD so that we got visibility into our CSCD pipelines. And the other reason is that Istio itself can help you use tracing for your own applications. So this is kind of an indirect way to learn more about tracing that you can apply to your CSCD pipelines, but you can also apply to your microservices using Istio. So it's kind of indirectly related at best. Um, OK, so hopefully everyone here that is working on some code has some form of CI-CD. may not be the most sophisticated, but at some point, you are building your code, testing your code. Um, this may be locally on your machine, or it may be in some Cloud Runner. Um, like I think this is a picture of GitHub Actions, just going through some flows of building and checking things out, installing it, running tests, whatever. Now, the dream here is that this is fast, right? If I can run my test suite in one millisecond, I can run it all the time. I can run it every time a file changes, right? I don't even have to think about running tests. I just run them, and I know pass fail instantly. If they take an hour, on the other hand, now it's like I run the test before I go to lunch, and I come back and then get a coffee and sit around for a little bit and find the good result, right? These are wildly different. Um, so whether it's locally or in a kind of pull request flow, uh, the faster we can get our CICD pipelines, the faster we can iterate, and the better experience. Now, the issue is that in order to make something faster, we need to understand why it's slow so we can see where it's spending time and where we can improve. Otherwise, we're going to be wasting a lot of effort optimizing things that don't really matter. So the current state of CICD observability, at least in open source projects on GitHub that I'm familiar with, is pretty terrible. Uh, you have a few options. You can get the list view. Here I have a list of tests. They passed or failed. That's kind of useless for uh, optimizing them, right? It's great to know they passed, but I don't know how long they took. I don't know why they took that long. Uh, if you don't like that, you can get a grid view. This one is also not very useful for the same reasons. If you don't like a grid, you can get a graph. I think this is Git, GitLab, maybe. Uh, again, I can see what's going on, but I can't actually optimize it because I don't know where it's spending time. So none of this is particularly useful for me if I want to optimize my CI CD. I don't really have observability. I can get kind of surface level stuff, but nothing in depth. So that's where tracing comes in. Tracing is really this thing that's mostly associated with kind of microservice architecture, where it's often called distributed tracing, right? And the idea is that in a single monolith tree, you can have logs or metrics and whatnot. But with a microservice, everything's distributed, and we need to have a way to join these together so that we understand what's going on in the system. So this shows kind of a fake example of a trace that is a client calling some API. And under the hood, the API is calling a bunch of other services, some of which also call other other services. So we have you know, some gateway that calls a database. And we can see all these things together, how long each action took, what the flow of dependencies is, et cetera. So this is a very rich view of data. Um, in Istio, we support this as well. So here's an example trace of a real world service, the product page book info uh, going through the Ingress gateway. And we can see where time is spent on each microservice call. So this, I think, is one of the most powerful tools in the kind of observability toolkit. And I want to apply that to CI CD. So I'm going to start at the end where we've actually done this in Istio and explain some of the benefits, and then I'll talk about how to get it there. So here's an example trace of one of our end-to-end -end test jobs. Um, I've collapsed a lot of the spans because there's actually 10,000 of them because um, we go really, really fine grain detail. Uh, so this just gives kind of an overview. So you can see here, for example, we get a lot of understanding of what's going on in the test, right? We can see this test takes five minutes, uh, almost six minutes. And a minute of that's in setup kind cluster. Kind is Kubernetes and Docker, so that's where we run our, our tests. That's kind of slow. Maybe we could focus on there for optimization. I will note that this is after a lot of optimization. So I'm going to show some traces from before we optimize that show some better examples. Um, we can also see each test in purple here 
has a lot of setup time. Um, you know, 40 seconds here and then a minute and five seconds later. That's another error that we could see is maybe uh, potentially wasted time. Uh, we could see as well, maybe this build images task could be run in parallel to the setup kind cluster. So there's a lot of info we get just immediately. And this is just a high level view, right? We also have low level view of each actual HTTP call made in each request. And we make thousands of HTTP calls in our, in our tasks. Um, so that was showing, again, the optimized view, which makes it look a little bit less interesting because there's no obvious areas to improve uh, because we've already tackled a lot of the low-hanging fruit. But here's an example of, this is kind of simplified, but we basically run just go test dot, dot, dot. And we have a span for the entire test run. It takes about 10 minutes. And you can see we tested two packages, the security and the pilot package, which each took about two minutes. So the question is, what is going on in this five minute gap where nothing's happening, right? And that's something that was, uh, this is from our real test infrastructure. We had this for many, many years um, and we didn't notice until we turned on tracing and it immediately stood out like a sore thumb. Like it took 10 seconds to recognize this once we had tracing and it, we spent years not knowing it for a while. Now the actual reason why this happens is way beyond this 10 minute time period, but I have a, massive 25 page blog post that goes into depth onto onto this problem and many other problems so if you're interested feel free to check it out now i think the biggest counter argument to using tracing uh, for cacd is that like well i have logs right the logs are good enough and i would argue that the logs are actually not sufficient if you go look at the logs from any go test and i'm familiar with go it could probably apply to some other languages as well I promise you, you will get logs that look like your tests are running in sequence A, B, C, D, whatever alphabetical order of your packages, right? And you'll get a view that looks like this. Now, that's not actually what's happening. In reality, a lot of the packages are running in parallel. You may have something that looks more like this, and they may actually not be running in order at all. See, one thing that Go does is it sequences the order that it prints out the logs. That's not the order that they're running. It's batching up all the output of the logs and printing them out in order, so that it looks like they're in order. It's completely lying to you, right? Now, you may also get something more interesting than just seeing kind of, oh, sure, they're running parallel, but that doesn't really help much. You may find, for example, that we have a huge gap between uh, actual packages running, for example. This is not hypothetical. This is a real world trace shown here from, again, East Joe's test suite. And we can see this package takes about 50 seconds, this long blue one. The, the real interesting part though, this package has zero tests. So how can a package that has zero tests take 50 seconds to run, right? It is a mystery that's also discussed in my blog post. That's not really the point of this. The point is that if you look at the logs, it says the test executes in zero seconds. And if you look at the traces, you'll find that entire thread is blocked for 50 seconds on this test. Um, so again, logs are helpful even with tracing, but they're not sufficient on their own in my opinion. So now hopefully you're convinced you want tracing. I'm going to give kind of a lightning fast introduction to how we get there. So the first thing you need to do is instrument your code. If you have a function that says called build, for example, all we need to do to do tracing is kind of a pretty minimal. We start a span, uh, which is kind of one, one unit of tracing. And then eventually we end the span and we propagate that. Open telemetry has docs on how to do this with every single language out there pretty much. Uh, so go check that out for more information. The next thing we need to do is propagate context. So in order to link up the spans, we need to join uh, kind of each parent needs to tell the child what span, what trace they should be a part of. Traditionally, this is done through HTTP headers because we're talking about microservices calling each other over HTTP. In CICD, you may also use uh, HTTP headers, but oftentimes you have different processes calling each other, uh, maybe some, some shell script, right? Executing some go test and then go build and then Docker push, whatever. So in CICD, it's often done through this environment variable instead. Same form, way to convey it. This is not technically part of the open telemetry standard, but it's becoming a de facto standard across a bunch of CICD usages. Last thing, I mentioned that open telemetry has info on uh, instrumenting a bunch of languages. CICD uses Bash pretty extensively in my experience. You can also do tracing with Bash. Uh, it's pretty simple. Here's a blog post that shows a bit more about how to do that. 
finally, you may want to actually instrument the CI/CD platform itself. You can get a lot of useful info, like finding out, hey, the Git clone of my repo is taking two minutes. What's going on? Like that's a lot of time wasted, or other things of that nature. So to get the full picture, you probably also want support in your CI/CD platform. Now, most people probably can't go modify the CI/CD platform, but you can at least open an issue. As I've been here for Prow, Prow's our CI/CD provider. Uh, a lot of the CI/CD providers out there, like BuildKite and GitLab, I think, are adding or have added tracing. Um, so you may not need to do this step. And that's it. Thanks, everyone, for coming to my talk. I hope you've seen the value of adding tracing for CI/CD and are able to use it in your environment. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or find me on Slack. Thanks.